channel, it's your girl, Sugar. And um, if you're new to my channel, if you're seeing my face for the very first time, don't forget to like, don't forget to leave a comment after seeing this video. And of course, the most important thing is for you to click on that subscribe button because I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> so today, we're going to be talking about those family members that we cannot stand. Jeez, those family members that get on our nerves, those family, those, those relatives that you just want to... I'm kidding, but those family members that just makes us angry. So the very first on my list, my personal list. Okay, um, a quick disclaimer: this is not personal. This is from like my wildest imagination. So I'm not in any way referring to any member of my family. Before you people go and show my mother this video again now and say I'm throwing jabs at somebody, somebody, somebody. So please. <laughs> so the very first on my list are those family members that they are the minister for reporting. They are the they are the commissioner for reporting. What happened? Just because you see me in a boy's car. The next thing you come to our house. Ah, ah, and they want to see they just came to greet though. They will not come. Ah ah. Kemi, how is that your friend now? In my head, I'll be like, which friend? You don't know any of my friends. Be like, I'll be like mommy, which friend, ma? Say, eh, that boy I saw you in his car. Okay. No, 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 no. You should have just said you want to mention is that you saw me in a boy's car. That's all you came for. You are just disguising my mommy here from disguising me. You only wanted to come and say you saw me in a boy's car. But it's good. It's good. Thank you. Well, I'm going to deny. I'm going to say you did not see me in anybody's car because I don't know what you're talking about. So when you are done, come and be going to your house. Meanwhile, your daughter Ronke is in my school. She's always hopping around from one lecturer to another, from one sugar daddy to another. Nobody's talking about that. But mm, it's good. I'm just sitting in a boy's car. You have a problem with that? It's nice, which reminds me of a video I saw on the internet a few weeks back of an uncle that saw the girl's bikini picture on the internet then drove all the way to her parents' house to tell them that he saw her in a bikini. What's your aim? You people, I really don't know your aim. I don't know your plan. I don't know where you're driving at. That's number one. Then number two, those relatives that visit and don't know when to don't get me wrong, I'm not against relatives and family members visiting or whatever, but I, I accept you have an accommodation problem or you are having a marital problem or something, 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 there's a problem somewhere. I don't know why you should come to your sister's place, your brother's place, your uncle, your auntie, when it's not that you came for vacation or holiday or something and you're spending a month, two months, hello, <laughs> mommy. <laughs> Hey, my lord, your presence is no longer welcomed. Mommy, please, come and excuse us. Because we need a private family time that you are disturbing. Come and be going like, why would you just come and sit in someone's house and... For no reason, actually, you just come and just stay. You sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up. You're not contributing anything. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against visitation and all of that. But know when to leave. That's what I'm saying. Thanks. Thirdly, those family members that are so entitled, God, these ones get on a very special nerve. Imagine your sister having like five, six kids, and you have just two that you know you're capable of taking care of. And now your sister is angry that you are not contributing to her child's school fees. Like, edge or a Auntie Billy Key, is it, is it me that sent you to go and have six children that you know you cannot cater for? I really don't understand how people think because, no, just, okay, just make it make sense. I have two kids because I know I'm capable of taking care of these two kids. I don't have more than that. But you, piglet, you have six, you have seven, you have nine, you have five. When you know you cannot adequately take care of those. And now you are not telling everybody that I'm your sister and I cannot help you take care of your kids. My dear, see. Let all those things stop because it does not actually make any sense. That is the spirit of entitlement. And I'm praying right now that that spirit should die by fire because it's not even going to work for me. I believe all those things should stop in our parents' generation because it's our generation. It's you that give birth to your children that you take care of because I don't know why anybody that is not capable of taking care of five, six kids will be having them. Yes. 
Okay, another side of family members, another set of relatives that get on my nerves are those ones that see a problem with everything you do. But I just want to believe that it no longer happens because while I was still younger, I see people, I see family members that, um, like when I entered the, my unit and when I had my first degree, I see family members that would come and tell my parents that, ah, they saw me in school and I had pink hair on, I had, I had blue braids, I had green braids. For fuck's sake, it's just braids and it's colored. What's wrong in that? That's the problem you have with me because of the color of my hair. Your own daughter have gone through like five abortions. You don't have a problem with that. You are not saying that. But your problem in this life is the color of my hair. Thank you, ma. Thank you very much. But don't worry. We know you. And we see you. And we thank you. relative that piss me off are those ones that visit you only to come and cause trouble between you and your mom or you and your dad. For instance, maybe your mom is cooking in the kitchen and you're sitting with her in the kitchen and you're pressing your phone or just like gisting with her or something. Then they will now come. Ah ah, Kenny, you're looking at your mother cooking. You can't even help her. Ah, and your mom is saying, I don't know what has come over you. I trust my daughter being paid. Me only one in kitchen. Go job. Come on, get up. Mommy. Mommy, is my mother complaining? No, ask yourself, is my mother complaining? Because this thing, all this thing that you are not saying, I don't know your aim. I don't know, I don't know what you are trying to drive at. That your car, I don't know where it's facing. What exactly do you want? My mother isn't complaining, so why are you all like, and we know your daughter. We know your sons. From morning till night, they are always talking about her. But they are always walking around in the streets. They never used to stay at the doctors of help, helping you or their dad. And it's mostly women. You see, we are. You see, women, eh? We have problems. Why do you? Why are you gonna come and cause problem in my home? Why are you gonna cause fight between me and my mother? Kill her, leave me alone. If you want, if you feel like helping, help her. Do you even know maybe my mom likes cooking and somebody somebody is helping her? Do you know maybe she does not like it and you're just there saying, eh, you trust your own daughter? You, Mommy, ah, please sit down. Go and rest. Go and take several seats and just be near. You know? <laughs> and all those family members that just complain about your whole lifestyle. The color of your hair, your piercings, you, you wear makeup, you wear trousers. You, Mommy, you, like, you cannot be judging my own lifestyle with the way you live your own. We're totally different people. I'm different from your kids. And your kids don't wear makeup, they don't wear trousers, they don't have extra piercings. Doesn't even make them better than I am. So, why are you making it look like I'm devil's first daughter? Like, ah, no, these family members, they just, they just annoy and I actually don't like when they visit because they will just look at you sometimes and you, in your head you'll be like, you feel like shit because there's one kind of eyes that they will use and just look at you and just make you feel less of yourself. Oh, yes. And there are this set of family members, mostly aunties, all those mothers, younger sister, fathers, elder sister, you know that kind of, all those kind of family members that they are kind of close with you, but they have hidden agenda. You're wearing a hair, you're wearing a hair, a hair, I don't know which one, you're just wearing a wig and they'll be like, ah, oh, okay, me, this your hair is nice, so when you tell me what I'm going straight, tell me what I'm working it for. Then you said you now make mistake when they ask you that how much did you buy it. You now tell them the price. Sometimes you can actually cut it down. Maybe tell them like half the price. Maybe you got the air for like two hundred k, and you tell them you got it for hundred k. The next thing, ah, hundred thousand naira. Eh, where did you see it? How can what? How old are you that you're wearing wig of hundred thousand naira? Then the next thing they're gonna tell your mother that ah, and you never buy more. You're the one spoiling this girl. How can she? How old is she? Is she working? Why would you be wearing it of hundred thousand naira? Then, but. You, you just said the hair was nice. So if it's nice, why can't I spend 
100,000 on it if I have it, if my parents can afford to give me and you'll just be like, I'm glad I didn't tell you the actual price. Like all those family members can spoil things and they do not tell your parents, you're giving her too much money. My own daughter, I give her only this thing monthly. I give her only 20,000 monthly. That's your daughter, that's not your daughter's business. Maybe your daughter and poverty, they've signed an agreement. Me and poverty, we don't mix. No, we don't mix. So no, stop comparing me and your daughter. Okay, ma? Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye. Okay, so another type of family member that I cannot stand are those ones that visit. And when they go, when they are leaving, you know all those your rich uncles, all those millionaire, billionaire uncles and aunties that when they are leaving, you have calculated in your head that ah, this is my uncle. When he, when he leaves, it's going to bust my head. And, and then they are going, they are going towards their car and they are like, ah, ah, bye bye, yo. And you're like, okay, sir. Bye bye, ma. Bye bye, sir. Have a safe trip, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> bye bye, sir. <laughs> I did not get it is that you are trying to say they should you call them out on girls, they should drop something for you, you know. And they are saying bye bye. I'm saying bye bye. You are saying bye bye. I'm saying bye. You are saying bye. I'm saying take care. You are saying take care. I'm saying drive safely. You are saying drive safely. I'm not seeing anywhere you are trying to, you know, put your hand inside your pockets or ask for my account number and say you want to transfer and, and you know I expect that you will come next time and I will smile at you. No, what's funny? Mm -mm. Uncle, uncle, uncle Kabir. What is funny? What's going to, if I see you next, my face is going to be like this. Because I know you're not going to drop something. You're not going to drop something for the girls. So why exactly should I laugh with you? Because kilo funny. Ko funny ma. Ah. Because it's not funny. So let us just move on. Bye bye, thank you. Drive safely. Hireo. Then there are some family members that feel like you don't have any other thing to do with your head than to think about them. Imagine a family member that you've not seen in like maybe the last time you saw that relative was when you were like maybe two or three years old. And then they see you now that you're like 22, 23, and they expect you to just remember them. Like, why? How? How? Do you think I've not been using my brain for anything? Then they will see you and be like, ah ah, possible. Ah ah, you don't remember me. <laughs> it was me that bought you your first, your first baby shoes. L like, ma. <laughs> How am I supposed to remember? And then you'll be like, ah no, 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 no. When you see your mother, tell her that you saw Auntie Biliki. Okay. Tell her that you saw, ah ah, there's no way. Ah, and I'm so disappointed. How can you not remember me? But ma, how am I supposed to? Let me leave. How am I supposed to remember you? I don't even remember what I ate yesterday. And I'm supposed to remember that you bought me my first shoes when I was three months old. See, don't just come off it, ma. Mommy, yeah, come off it. I don't remember you. Just let's move on. So now let's also talk about those family members that when they are in your house, they do not know how to behave. Like if it's a girl, she comes to your wardrobe, start checking your clothes, start wearing them, start wearing your shoes, start like if you buy something, what should you buy it? Where did you buy it? Start putting eyes in every of your business. Like, please be composed. Shout out, God, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing like, yeah, I know you're my cousin, I know you're my niece, I know you're my nephew, but you don't have to <clears throat> you don't have to be all up in my business like that. Like, yeah, you're my family, but learn to, you know, to be like baby don't fear see her be how did you say that in Yoruba? Like stay one place, be doing normal, what's that? Then also oh, lastly, lastly before I round up, I'd like to talk about those relatives that feel like they are your Lord and personal savior. Like once they talk to you, you have to heed, you have to listen, you have to do whatever they say. For instance, maybe you and somebody you are having a fight, then you hear them say things like, ah, I'm not worried, I'm going to talk to her. It's not possible I talk to her and she does not listen. One, you are not my brother, you are not my brother. You are like one distant relative that I don't understand. But uh, then they will not be talking to you and they will be like, ah, ah, can't I talk to you? Do you know how I am to you? Ask your mom, even your mom. I can't talk to her and she will not listen. <laughs> don't play, calm down. I'm not going to listen. All the shouting that you are shouting, you are just stressing your esophagus. I don't understand. I'm not going to listen. If you like, okay. I'll not be telling you yes and okay. Because I don't know what you're feeling like. Hey, ah, mom, like when somebody comes to report you to them, they'll be like, ah, mom, worry. I can't talk to her and she will not listen. Ah, ah, do you know how she is to me? She's my cousin's auntie, brother, sister, kineko, kineko. Then they'll see you and start be like, hey, what I'm about to tell you, you must listen, 
you must do this, you must do that, you must do this, you must do this because I am your one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. Then they will just explain to you how they are related to you and why you must listen. And at the end of the day, they are chatting shit. They are just chatting nonsense to you. Like, what's that? So guys, I have come to the end of today's video. If you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment sharing with us what your family members do that you cannot stand, that get on your nerves. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also follow me on my Instagram at sugarated underscore. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.